Okay, to unzip the road cover, easiest if you start with the bottom. Okay. Release your Velcro, turn up the corners, and that exposes your zipper. So now we run it the whole way around, and the same with the top layer. Release the Velcro, which exposes the zip, and run it the whole way around. So you can do both layers at the same time, or one person can do the top, one person can do the bottom. So finishing around here again, everything completely removes now. So you can roll it back and control the whole thing up. Okay. Now we're up to the winch stage. Release the winch out of the bag. Release the lock. Hook your strap on to this loop here. Release enough of the Release enough of this until you get to the black line and lock it off. That's really important. Make sure it's locked. Find your handle, which I've got in the walkway. You can put it in the toolbox. Don't use the top. That's one to one. It's too heavy for that. The bottom is five to one. Make sure it's clip clipped on. Now we can release the latches that were holding the floor down. way to do this next bit is with a broom. Position it underneath the side here. I use the bristle end and then lift. Okay. Now it's really important this is a two hand operation. Don't lock the brake off. If the wind catches it you want to be able to let the brake go quickly and that it re-engages. So holding it open, winding anti-clockwise, and as you can see, the floor starts to lower. Now we have the, the awning roof attached on this one, as we're going to do a setup, and I imagine most people will have the awning on most of the time. So as the floor goes down, you see the room starting to pull itself up. and pull this part of the awning down, that's the end wall of your awning. A little bit untidy at this point, but it makes life a lot easier. Continue winding down. You see that the strap seats itself over the roller over there, and it rolls itself down nice and easily. Give yourself a little bit of free space. Come around to this side and unhook off the floor. You no longer need the strap, and we can put that away in a minute. You've got four adjustable legs. Depending on the level ground you're on, unlikely to be concrete, um, drop your legs down individually using these clips until you're at the right height or as close to the right height and then they lock off. Walk around the trailer, pull its skirts down. There's two at the front as well. So walking inside, you turn the light on here. So let's see what we're doing. You've got two legs that sit next to your bed. Push up and out on your wall and attach, attach the leg. Same on this end here. Then, pressing on the pole you just put up, tighten off this bar, both ends. With the walkway step, release your locks. I normally put it onto my thigh, other people put it on their hip, depends how tall you are. That gives you both hands free. Start at the bottom of the door and ease it around the base of the door and stick the Velcro and then go upwards both sides to give you your seal. If you start at the top, it gets stuck at the bottom and you end up in all sorts of trouble. Lower down the step, that's the access to get up onto your bed. In the walkway space, you've got 
a light. So you can see getting up and down at night. And you've also got a cigarette socket on the far side so that you can put a fridge into or a fan, however you want to set it up. We're now going to go through the setup of the awning for the Argyle. Um, the poles that you have are laid out here in front of me. What you have is in the upright poles, which are these aluminium twist locks, you've got two distinct lengths. As you can see here, the body is definitely longer. That's your centre upright, where the tallest part of the tent is, is your longest pole. All of your other uprights are the same length. In the ones with the spigots, which is your outside edge, you've actually got two spares, so that you can put up either the external cover above your bed, or the external cover outside of the main room. These three here are what I call footed spreaders. As you can see, you put one in and squash with a hole at the other end. That's where the spigot upright goes into, and this end here comes back against the tent, so they're in this position here. These two, I'll explain towards the end, they're part of the structure that holds the side wall out past the kitchen. And these two, one long, and one short. The short one goes from the tallest point to over your kitchen and the longest goes from the tallest point to the far corner. Easiest way I've found is to set them out on the ground, then pull the roof down off, the awning roof down off the roof. And see so I've now laid out the basic structure. So I've got the spreaders coming out from the tent, the upright poles ready to grab, and the spread of bars across the front. Now I'm going to pull down the roof off the top of the tent. When you put the tent, put the awning up, you unzip this first section, so we need to zip that back down. Mark off how 
how long to extend your poles to. This applies to these two front spreaders as well as these hooded spreaders going back to the tent. That means that when you're stretching them out before you set up your tent, you get into the right length and then you're not mucking around with them. The third spreader into the pocket. Make sure that when you put these spreaders in, your T-nut, which is the adjuster, the tightener here on your pole, make sure that they're not pointing up into the canvas, you'll damage your canvas, make sure they're always pointing down. And then you've got your upright, this last one. Attach your spreader to it, into the hole. Adjust your length if you didn't have it at the right length already. Adjust your height, so as you can see at the moment, this is all very much leaning down. So starting in the middle, lift up your height and extend these. These are a twist lock pole. Okay, you don't need to be Superman, it's a gentle turn. Okay, if you over tighten them, they will go back to being loose again. So adjust all three poles. Next you're going to use these other upright poles. So you've got two short ones and one longer and they've got the C-clip at the top. The short ones the two lower ends obviously. They go over the vinyl and click on the pole. Stretch them out. It's a bit hard here on the, on the slippery floor. Okay, what they're designed to do is particularly noticeable here in the middle. They're going to take the sag out from the weight of that pole and stop you getting a, a whole lot of water stuck in there if you do get any rain. two poles that support the end wall here. The first pole is the spreader bar. It has the bent spigot on the end. That bent spigot goes into the saddle on the far corner of the bed base. Like so. Last piece, in through there, and clips onto your upright. Extend this out so that it's all sitting nicely. Obviously when you can peg it all, it always sits better. Now adjust this pole height till your wall is almost vertical from here down. That stops, that stops the pegs from coming out because they're sitting in better and it also stops the end wall from popping off this um, spigot here. So now we're going to go through how to pack down your Argyle camp trailer. First of all we're going to take all the poles out from underneath the awning roof. Then we're going to go inside and pack out the interior. That involves taking down those two legs that we put up, uh, loosening off those two spreader bars and putting away the step. Obviously all your own personal gear would need to be packed away as well. Um, by doing that, it allows when we push the awning roof over the top, it makes it easier for us to reach the awning roof to pull it over nice and smoothly. So, we'll just get going. Velcro on this end pole here. Doesn't matter which 
pretend you go from first. check that your door is rolled down and just push it inside. You don't need to velcro it down or anything. Now reattach your winch handle. You can wind it up using the ratchet sound or you can hold it off for a quiet recovery. What we're going to do, if you have an assistant, their job is to check at the folding point uh, where the um, hinges are to make sure there's no canvas tack getting caught. Um, if you're doing it by yourself, you would basically do it in three stages. You would go up to about 45 degrees, up to nearly 90, and then fold the remainder. What you do need to check, whether you check yourself or your assistant's checking, Make sure nothing is trapped here at the hinge point, both sides. Make sure that all of this is folding in nicely the whole way around. Then you keep winding. Tuck this in at this stage, the easier it is to get your 
road cover over the front and the back. Make sure your door is gone inside as well, you don't want that hanging out. Now with the awning over the roof, what you do need to do, it'll get to a certain point where this bar here starts to come down. At that stage, your awning roof starts to puddle on the floor. So get your assistant to come in. All they have to do is put their hands on the window of the end wall, hold it there until that part comes down. It comes down very gradually. There's no risk of getting your hands trapped. Now just come around. Wipe the dust off with a damp cloth and then zip it shut and spray with silicon spray. 